Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to Danby West Church this morning on the Sunday after our Lord's ascension into heaven. A very warm welcome too to those who've joined us online. Unfortunately, we're still not able to sing, but the choir will be leading us. Um, we haven't an organ, but David uh, has set everything up on his equipment, so we'll be fine That's for for music, <laughs> fingers crossed. So I think during the service we remain seated, don't we? So we have a service sheet which we'll will follow. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You who are passing through hard times, come. You who need strength to support those who are suffering, come. You who are full of happiness, come. You who are burdened and busy, come. Come, let us unite in worship of the one who offers us protection, comfort and joy. We come to you, Lord, ready to worship, ready to learn, ready for prayer ready for action. May our worship here spill out into our everyday. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus. That's our first hymn. Do please home if you wish, but obviously we can't sing. helps if I turn the volume up. One of those things I've learned over the years. <laughs> that should do it.
a prayer of approach. Gracious God, set apart as your people, yet together in your world, we worship you as one. Emboldened by your power, protected by your promises, and filled with your peace, we worship you as one. Upheld by your word, inspired by your truth, and named as your friends, we worship you as one. Keep us safe in the world, keep us praying for the world, keep us serving the world as one in Jesus' name. We say, Amen. We say together the prayer of confession. Forgive us, gracious God, when we have turned away from your word and immersed ourselves in the distractions of the world. Forgive us when we have sought to belong to the world and compromised your truth to fit in. Forgive us when we have bickered amongst ourselves and not shown the world that we are one. Forgive us when we have distanced ourselves from those you have called us to serve. Forgive us, O God. Protect us and unite us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we receive God's forgiveness, remembering that Jesus died upon the cross so that we might be forgiven and rose again that we might have new life. We say together, gracious God, we thank you for the enduring prayer of Jesus for his disciples, which reaches and reassures us today as we walk in their footsteps, reminding us that we are not alone, but protected, empowered, forgiven, and surrounded by your grace every step of the way. Amen. The collect for today. Say together, risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We have our first meeting. The first reading is taken from the first chapter of Acts of the Apostles, uh, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David, concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they drew lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sue. And the next reading, please. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 17. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, thy name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that you may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify, sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Thank you, Carol. Now, for the affirmation of faith this morning, David's going to teach us some actions to Lord, I lift your name on high, which the choir will sing. You thought you were going to have a nice, quiet morning, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so the actions are very simple. In sign language for ESL, that's capital L, and that's big capital L, so it's LL, so it's Lord, I lift, Name is like a banner, name on high, simple. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm getting my words, get the words in the right order, that makes it easier. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us, you make the marks the cross of the uh, nails in your hand. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, like writing a check. Remember writing checks? <laughs> from the uh, cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name high. We'll see how badly you can do that. <laughs> So it goes something like this. I might stop playing halfway through and get you to do the actions with me. Lord, I lift your name. Sky. 
When I was little, a long, 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 long time ago, um, I learned how to pray. And the way I learned to pray was something like this. At the end of each day, I would kneel down beside my bed um, with either my mum or my granny, and we would say, God bless mummy and daddy. God bless Stephen and Michael and Peter. God bless granny and granddad and nanny. And God bless everybody. Amen. And I could go to bed. I wonder how many of you learned to pray like that. And then perhaps a bit later on, you learned our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we learned that. And prayer is one of those things which, for many of us, we stop at that point. In fact, I stopped praying at the age of about nine, when I prayed that the mess I'd got myself into, God would get me out. And he didn't. It was my own fault, and I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing, and I was, got caught doing what it was I shouldn't have been doing. And my prayer was, God, please make these people go away and not be nasty to me, because it was all their fault they were being nasty to me, nothing to do with what I was doing at all. And God didn't answer, so I stopped praying. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I became a Christian and, and realised that there was so much more to prayer than I originally intended. But then... You may not have done this, but I was um, involved with churches where they used to have midweek prayer meetings. Does anybody ever go to midweek prayer meetings? And basically what you do is you sit around in a circle in a cold hall somewhere, and you would take it in turns to pray around the circle. And you'd get this dread coming, because I know it's going to be my turn to pray out loud in a minute, and I don't know what to pray, so I'd listen to what everybody else prayed and repeat their prayers. Though I have to remember there was one lovely time when that happened, when there was this lovely lady for a period of about a year in the church I was going to at that point, used to pray every week, Lord God, protect us from the snare of sin, like a spider's web woven around us. And she prayed that prayer every week. And at the end of about a year, one of the people who I was with, his name was Ken, prayed immediately after, Father God, I pray that you would kill the spider. <laughs> And that began to give me a clue about what prayer was like. At the heart of Jesus's prayer that we've had listened to this morning is this idea that Jesus prays to the Father in a very intimate way. The prayer that he prays comes out of the relationship that he has. It's not a list of, God, will you please do this, that and the other. It's an expression of the relationship that he has with the Father and with the people around him. And knowing what's going on, he prays for the disciples. He prays that they may be one. He prays that they would be protected from all that's going on. He prays that they would be in the world, but not of the world. And pray that the glory that he had would be shown in amongst his disciples. In effect, he's praying for the kingdom to come for the disciples. Now, the one thing I've learned about prayer is that I'm not very good at it. I've been practicing for almost 40 years now, and I've still not got very good at it. But I've also discovered that the only way I get better at it is by praying. It's not one of those things where you can read a manual and say, right, I do A, B, C, and D, and then it'll all sort itself out. Prayer is one of those things which you learn to do by doing. I wonder where you are in your prayer life. I wonder whether your prayers are bit still like the children or whether you've developed something of the relationship that God intends us to have in prayer there are times when I ask my wife for something 
that's fairly rare these days because actually she knows what I need and often has got it sorted out before I even ask for it. But our conversation is usually about the things of the world and what's going on and what's going on for our family and what's going on for our friends and what's going on in the house. And we talk together about the things and we discuss things and at the end of it, we come to a conclusion about what is the right thing to do. That's when I realised that my wife was right before we started, but it takes time to get there because I'm a man. And prayer in one sense is a bit like that. It's an invitation to conversation with God the Father through Jesus, his son, in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. The heart of prayer is simply saying, God, this is what's going on around us. What do you want to do about it? God, this is what's around us. Thank you that it's so amazing. God, thank you for the people you've sent me to be with. Help me to get on better with them. Notice it's help them not get better on with better on, get them, not let them get better on with me, but me get better on with them because prayer is mainly about me not about the other people in that context. Have you ever prayed, Lord, please change so-and-so? I don't think that's a valid prayer. I think it's the other way around. Lord, change me so that I'm better at working with that person. Prayer is that conversation with God where I bring all that's going on in my life and I talk to him about it. And that may be the plans I have for my wedding. It may be what I'm doing in the garden. It may be what I'm doing in the garage, in the workshop, or I'm at school, or at home, or at church, or whatever it is I'm doing. It's talking to God in that context. It's recognising that God is there, and he's interested in it. And then asking the question, Father God, what do you want to do in me and through me in this time and in this place? So that more of your kingdom may come here on earth as it is in heaven. And when we pray for each other, we're praying the same thing. That they might discover something more of God's love and kindness and goodness for them. A lot of prayer meetings are praying for people who are outside of the church or praying for the church. It's really interesting if you read through the New Testament and read especially Paul's prayers for the church. Almost always he's praying for the people of God that they would discover more of who God was so that they could do more of what God intended them to do. And that's the journey which I think all of us need to go on, that learning that God's intention is that we discover more about him so that we learn more about ourselves, so that we can become the people more how he intends us to be. It's that journey of, of discovery, that who I am is made in the image of God. Later on this afternoon, we're gonna start praying around the villages of the Benefice of the Whisk. We're gonna meet at Birkby and we're gonna stand outside the church. And as we do that, we're gonna start praying for the kingdom to come in those places, in the houses, the people, the circumstances that we know. And we're gonna ask God to guide us. And the temptations feel, well, that's beyond my, my level of skill. You know, that's for the, the really holy ones can go do things like that, but I can't do that. Because most of us feel inadequate. Sorry, I'll rephrase that. I feel inad inadequate when it comes to prayer. I never feel like I've quite got the right words in the right way. But nevertheless, as I do it, I discover God begins to work. I love the phrase which someone, I, I tried to find out where it came from, but I can't. Um, I was in a situation and I thought, well, perhaps I won't pray about it because God never answers prayer. But then I thought, no, perhaps I will answer, ask God because then if I do ask him, at least I'll discover if he might be able to answer prayer. And sometimes you have to take the risk of trying something and seeing what happens before you discover whether God answers that prayer. And one of the things I've discovered over the last 30 years is God answers prayer. He answers prayer for healing. He answers prayer for strength. He answers prayer for peace. He answers prayer that his presence would come. He answers prayer that he would somehow enable us to cope with what's going on around us in that time. He answers prayer as he guides us through the circumstances and situations of life. I'm here because of prayer. We prayed two years ago, God, show us what the next step will be. And then over a period of weeks and months, we began to listen to what God was saying and continue to pray. And in that process, God highlighted to us the fact that this was possibly the next job to go for. And then we talked with other people and they prayed with us and we talked about it some more. 
And at the end of that journey, either God answered my prayers and I'm here, and God answered your prayers and I'm here, or that perhaps it's just my imagination. But I have this amazing thing, when I think I ask, God so often still seems to turn up and answer, even though I'm not quite sure whether he's heard me. And then I discovered that prayer is always answered. Jesus answered this prayer. Jesus prayed for these, the disciples and God answered it. Didn't answer it the way they expected, but he did answer it. I wonder whether you think you're good enough at prayer. If you do, can you come and tell me how you do it? If you don't think you're good enough at prayer, come and join with me over this next week as we pray and learn to pray together. I'm convinced that the way forward for the benefits of the WISC starts as we pray together. As we pray for each other, as we pray for God's wisdom, we pray for our communities, that God's kingdom will come more and more here on earth as it is in heaven. It only ha happens as we begin that process of praying. So if you feel inadequate, if you feel like you don't know much how to do it, that's fine, because that's where I am. But come and join us and we'll learn to pray together. Let's be still for a moment. I'm going to see whether God might answer this prayer. If it's your prayer, you might want to say amen, which means, yes, I agree. Father God, thank you that you give us the privilege of being able to talk to you. Help us to learn to be better at talking to you. Help us to know more that you listen to us. And pour out afresh upon us the knowledge of your love and the power of your spirit that we might grow in all the things you have for us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to publish some bands of marriage. I'll publish the bands of marriage between Susie Brown and Jacob Sankey, both who have a qualifying connection to St. Eloy's in Great Smeaton, but live at the High Street in Middleton St. George. The High Street, sorry, not High Street. This is for the second time of asking, if anyone knows a reason in law why they may not be married, you must declare it. Assuming that there is still no response to that. We're going to pray for them. Let's ask. Let's ask for God's blessing on them. We ask that God would give them peace in the coming days as they prepare for their wedding. We pray for God's smoothing of the path before them. We pray for their families as they join together. That new friendships would be formed. And we pray that in Susie and Jacob's life together, that they may grow deeper in their love for each other and discover more of God's love for them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I invite Ian to um, lead us in our prayers of intercession this morning. Our prayers for today centre on unity. The response to Lord hear our prayers is Lord graciously hear us. We pray for unity among nations and the ending of conflicts between them, often caused by differences in religion and inequalities of wealth and opportunities, as in Palestine and Israel. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. We pray for countries all over the world which are suffering dreadfully from the effects of the pandemic and that vaccines will be shared rapidly and equitably. Perhaps we are hoping that lockdown won't be extended further in England, but how does that compare with India where 4,000 people are dying each day? Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for our local communities as well as the four nations of Great Britain 
that all can live in harmony of purpose and respect for each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us remember the sick and those near to death and those that nurse and comfort them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lastly, we pray for the ending of any conflict within ourselves or our immediate families. May we all receive the personal joy and quiet that Jesus prayed for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mind you of the signing of the peace. Peace be peace. Do you want to practice that? Peace. Prayer sometimes is physical as well as um, spoken. Um, there are times when I go, I have to walk to pray. There are times when I have to dance to pray. Now that's worthwhile watching. Um, but there are times when, when the physicality of prayer is, is really important. Now we're going to share with God's peace together, and that's something we receive and also give. So perhaps to hold our hands to receive as well. The risen Christ now reigns at God's right hand. He is the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also We might like to share with one another a sign of peace. To bring our offertory, which is just simply that remembrance that all that we have we bring before God our Father. The offering of our lives, the fruits of our labors, the relationships, the things we do, and we bring them as an offering to God to use and glorify Himself in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to see whether technology works better this time, and we're going to Sing to him, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Shall we? Uh, The Lord is here. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where the angels sing your praise. And we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are all of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna. The crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end they turned on him. And on the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, God's in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which Jesus died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This, this is our song. Our song. Our song. Our song. Our song. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our hosts, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. We invite all who love the Lord Jesus to share with us in bread this morning. Unfortunately, we're still not able to share in the wine. If you'd like to come and take communion, will you please follow the directions of Ian? He will show you the right time to come. We're going to come to that first step, and I will stand just there. And if you come and take the bread and then return to your seat, the choir are going to take communion first, and then they're going to lead us in singing, Come down love to love divine, um, which they can try doing without any security as well, because they're really talented. <laughs> but first they're going to come to share together in great mind. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be
say together the prayer after communion. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, to preach the That's the hymn we're going to sing next. Lord in throne in heavenly splendor. We'll see whether this one works. I'm 
Not sure what's causing that. Golden tongued in heavenly splendor, first begotten from the dead, thou alone hast from the defender, lifted up thy people's head. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus, true and living bread. Prince of life, for us thou live, by thy body souls are here. Prince of peace, thy peace thou give. By thy blood is pardon seed. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Word of God in flesh revealed. Past the Lamb, thine offering finished. Once for all, when thou wast slain. In its fullness, how diminished shall forevermore remain. Alleluia, Alleluia, cleansing soul from every stain. Great High Priest of our profession. Oil and medicine, by thy mighty intercession, grace and mercy thou dost win. Alleluia, Alleluia, only fabric lies from sin. Life in parting. Heavenly man, stricken rock with streaming sigh, heaven and earth with loud hosanna, worship thee, the Lamb who died. Alleluia, Alleluia, in the center, glory. Very brief notices to say that we're meeting this afternoon at four o'clock at Berkeley, where we'll begin our week of praying around the villages. So it's Berkeley this afternoon, um, and then the rest of the churches is on the list there. Just to say, when we come to Great Smeeting in Hornby, if you live in Hornby or want to start off in Hornby on your own, that's fine. But there'll also be one or two of us probably will sort of start off at Great Smeeting and then go on to Hornby as well. So as long as people are praying in Hornby, it doesn't really matter which way we do it. And then also say, if you can't make those, but you want to pray for your villages, I'm going to put some information on the Facebook page on some simple hints and tips for prayer walking for you to look at and to download. Next Sunday is our open air service at East Cowton, where you can sing. Um, and if you would like to choose a hymn for that, there's still a couple of hymns slots which are free but if you choose a hymn I need you to tell me why or tell us why you've chosen it and it can't be just because I like it um, it's not enough for that um, but just to sort of choose a couple of hymns but our theme will be um, the Holy Spirit and Pentecost and outside uh, and then the rest of the things I'll leave you to read on your own and pray about during the coming week so let's just be still for a moment recognizing God's presence with us, but recognizing that he was in our homes before we left this morning. He was in our cars or as we walk down the road and he'll be with us as we go from here and he'll be with us at our homes and every place we go this week. And so we pray together. As we leave this place, Lord, may our prayers be just beginning. May our worship, our time here, what we have learned and what we have discovered. Lead us into action and lives full of worship every hour of every day. We ask in the name of Jesus, whose whole life was an offering of worship to you. Amen. And so we receive the Father's blessing.
May God the Father who gave his son Jesus the name above every name strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. May God the Son who is great, our great high priest passed into the heavens plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church make you faithful servants of Christ the King. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So we go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.